do you think it's a good thing to hold police accountable when they commit acts of violence against the public, particularly when it was completely uncalled for and ended up murdering an innocent person or a person who may or may not have even been accused of a crime? Well, here's, here's a good one. In France, they are now tabling some kind of security bill, and part of that bill would make it illegal for anyone to publish the face or the name of a police officer while on duty. Like, it's essentially you can't record a police officer while they're doing their job. So, I guess we have to take the body camera's word for it, um, if they were wearing one. So essentially what you're, you're not allowed to do anymore is record police as they're committing a crime against a citizen, or in many cases, carrying out a killing. Now in Europe, it's pretty much known that the French police are one of the worst in the entire continent, and that what's really has a lot of people concerned. When you start putting up protections for the most brutal police force, you can see why people would kind of get nervous about that. So this is going to be Article 24 of the bill. Now, here's something that's very interesting. Recording a police officer doing their job uh, says it may harm their physical or mental integrity. You notice the moral integrity wasn't in there because you'd have to have a moral integrity first. But again, what does this even physical and mental integrity even mean? Like it would upset them if you were recording them? Make them unsafe if you record them committing a crime. So it's kind of this really nice, vague language here so that it can be applied in any way they want to when the inevitable Kate court, court, Kate case court comes up where somebody recorded a police officer. Now, it doesn't just stop there. It also increases the amount of police powers that the police would actually get, including high-tech measures such as drones with facial recognition cameras to monitor people around the country. So if you wanted to live in some kind of dystopian hellhole where you, like a, like a V for Vendetta kind of society where you had drones flying around, recognizing everybody's face, tracking where everybody is going and what you were doing at any time, hey, maybe France is the country for you. But, you know, that's not something that I would particularly choose to live under. Now, of course, because of these new security measures that they want to pass through, which are going through very quickly and very easily because, well, Parliament is the representative of the bourgeoisie or vote blue no matter who because, you know, that'll work. I digress. Anyway, as a result of it going through, there have been a great deal of protests all through France, and particularly in Paris, you know, the capital where the prime minister is and, and all that, you know, the prime minister, the president and all that, you know, the guy running the country. So, of course, these protests have already turned violent on numerous occasions and have injured a great deal of protesters, and many of them have been sent to jail, many of them still awaiting to actually be charged with anything. I mean, you know that thing where you have to be charged with something or you have to have committed or suspected to have committed a criminal offense when you get arrested and then you have to get charged and if you don't have anything to charge them with, you have to let them go. The main exception to this seems to be anybody who's arrested under anti-terrorism laws, which frankly, this is starting to sound a lot like. And this is something that really should scare a lot of people inside the country and frankly around the world, because it does certainly set a precedent. People are allowed to be able to just move around and just have their own life and not have this happen to them. I mean, let's be real here. This is primarily focused at people who protest the government, or particularly protest the, the capitalist representatives that are the government. So, you know, you might want to keep a track on people like that who tend to oppose the unjust order that you've put on people and then oppose the things that you do like this to actually oppress them and then continually point to things like the Soviet Union saying, oh, look, big bad animal book. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be so bad. And then, you know, you turn around and you actually do all those things yourself. 
So it's it's completely not surprising that you would get mass protests out of this, and many of them have been chanting slogans from the French Revolution, uh, some of them from the Paris Commune. Of course, we would be a very much uh, jumping the gun if we were to say that these were slogans that were intended to be used in a revolutionary manner because, you know, f France is very far away from having, you know, some kind of communist revolution. These are complaints against a, an overreaching police state that is oppressing people's rights. So you can understand why there'd be these calls yearning for freedom, you know, when they're trying to do things like this to you. So the French people are completely just in coming forward and protesting this kind of well, let's let, let's be honest about what this is. It's fascism, or at least totalitarianism, depending on how you define either of those words. And that is something that's very important to do. You know, it's always good to bash the fash, etc. So, to the people of France, uh, we certainly stand with you, and stand with you in your effort against this kind of totalitarian dystopian nightmare that Emmanuel Macron is trying to force upon you. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.